Peter Hilkema, Director Payments uh, at the Dutch Central Bank. I saw an interview of you at the Bankers where you talked about blockchain and uh, how you were involved in, in testing blockchain. And you had a couple of things which you thought were not uh, right about blockchain. Can you repeat them here? Uh, I can. We, we've done some research, I think, uh, for a couple of years already uh, in, into blockchain, particularly in Bitcoin blockchain. We're also looking at Ether right now. And I think uh, some of the concerns we have, if we if you put it in the context of would it be something that will work in payments? I think that that's then the criterion. And then it has to be very fast. It has to be able to do multiple payments, really a lot of payments per second. Mm -hmm. We want it to be sustainable um, and uh, it has to be uh, um, uh, giving, uh, it has to be right for finality. Mm -hmm. So if you make a payment, there has to be no doubt that that payment can be withdrawn. Mm -hmm. And I think on all those four items, uh, blockchain still needs to be improved. Um, the feedback I always get, particularly on Twitter from the uh, <laughs> from the Twitter community, yeah. is we know we're working on it, and I think it. Good, keep working on it, keep innovating. But before you can really say that payments on a blockchain can be can scale to really large numbers, also in the Netherlands, uh, these these items have to be uh, solved or improved. Yeah, you want thousands and thousands of thousands of payments per second. You don't want it to use a lot of energy. Yeah. And it basically, the finality, that's interesting because yeah. the finality, you say it was not sure that a payment really took place. Took and that is or took too long. It was the finality was not a problem about uh, that after 10 minutes it's done, but uh, not after a couple of seconds. Once a payment is done, uh, it has to be accepted in a block. The block has to be in a chain. Chain should not be forked. Yep. Uh, to, uh, and, and before all those if, 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 ifs, uh, if I'm in a supermarket and I want to pay for my groceries, I can't wait for all the ifs. Mm -hmm. I just need to know I pay, done, go home. Okay. The Dutch Central Bank has now a role to play in cryptocurrency, right? There is now, uh, there's now laws where you have to do something with it. What is that exactly? We have one role in cryptos and that has to do with anti-money laundering. Um, of course, there's been a, a, interestingly, there has been a, a call for, for supervisors to step into the world of crypto. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas uh, if you read the paper of Satoshi, I think the whole idea was to, to organize something outside of, of, of central banks and etc. But somehow we, we, uh, we are asked back in mm -hmm. um, and we had a look at it. And, uh, and the conclusion is, and we have uh, our advice on our website, but so, so you can read it there. But what we see is that you need to deal with this at a European level or worldwide and on this particular item we did and what is it we do we say that once cryptos enter the world of of, of yeah. euro and 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 uh, and, and dollars um, we want to have a check like we have with euros and dollars so you need to know where it is coming from who is the owner um, and and in that way uh, avoid uh, money laundering or uh, financing terrorism or other sorts of crime yeah you see that also a bunch of central banks uh, the english central bank the swedish central bank there's a bunch of experiments happening and the people are thinking about it do you see in particular areas where uh, where the the, 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 the blockchain in, in general can have a role what we uh, see and uh, what we say is that we don't see it now on the crypto side but we do think that the technology in itself could support some activities and there we very much look at uh, um, lending to small and middle enterprises maybe there would be a possibility mm -hmm. or cross-border payments um, why because in cross-border payments there's still a lot of inefficiency it takes long uh, you don't know where your money is for a certain sometimes uh, for a certain period of time it's somewhere um, yeah, if you have an inefficient banking system not like we have in Europe yeah. then it has a role I mean with instant payments that would be useless in Europe. Yeah. That, and, and, but not, not everything is instant yet in the world, so uh, it could make a difference over there. Okay. And the moment that crypto has millions of uh, transactions per second, doesn't use much energy, and that it's uh, finite, then uh, you say, come again. Come again, yeah. And then we'll see if it's better than whatever is then out there uh, in the world of payments as we know it. Yeah. Because it has to be better. Last year at, uh, at Blockchain Innovation Conference, we talked about the tokenization of assets, of buildings and yeah. of, uh, of loans and everything. Mm -hmm. Is there also a role for the Dutch Central Bank when that's happening? Um, I'm not sure if there's a role, but I do think that that in itself, that development is quite interesting because I, I, I see that transporting owner rights through tokenizations could be a, a technological improvement to do things more faster and more efficient. Yeah, and that is basically what we saw. Well, this year we're going to talk about blockchain, big data and artificial intelligence and we're going to show a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, um, production blockchains where huge billions and billions of dollars is being uh, transferred, so we're going to help 
help you with that. The second theme is consortia. All kinds of companies need to work together to basically make an ecosystem with tokens work. Is that something which they can do completely the oversight themselves or is there also a role at a certain point for a Dutch central bank? I think that is the big question with, with blockchain and crypto and tokenization. I think that the idea, this, the start from this technology is that you can do without central banks because you have your own community and you ensure that everything that has to do with trust is organized yeah. through crypto. Yeah. Um, and But some way or another... Uh, the Kicking always, and screaming, yeah. they always come ask <laughs> for <laughs> oversight. Yeah. So, and I, I think every time we need to look into what is the activity exactly, is it really new or is it just new technology doing an thing that is already regulated or not we look out for that very key um, and and I think that that is a step by step we will just have to uh, find each other have that discussion and uh, we are quite open to the discussion and we can have an informed discussion because we keep uh, experimenting ourselves and maybe that's something uh, we can discuss also uh, on the June 7th uh, because one of the things we are now looking into is whether or not we can with blockchain um, develop a tool that helps us to do the anti-money laundering supervision for blockchain mm -hmm. or yeah. other DLTs. So that's something the team is now looking into. Okay. We'll talk about it on June the 7th. Thank you very much.